Hi. Hello. Welcome back to Encouragement Through Cancer. This is Linda Mayo, and I am so glad to have you here with me again. I'm at my appointment um, right before, the day before my birthday, and um, I, I know you like the background. I mean, let you look a little bit. Isn't that nice? Nothing like having a nice atmosphere. You gotta go somewhere. Let it be bright and lively, okay? Especially when you're depressed. <laughs> and um, healing from a mastectomy. And you see that shop right there? All those bubble baths. Got my name on it, right there. Um, whoa, beautiful. I can smell it, you know, even through the glass. You know, it's like aroma, okay? Um, I'm gonna keep walking around a little bit. I'm just gonna spin as I turn. Love this place. So thankful for it. Also the outside, I'm keeping going, you guys. Hang in there with me. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, look, even somewhere for the kids to play. Okay. There you go. It's so good to have you here with me. Thank you for going with me on my journey with this Max said to me. Thank you so much. Now, the last time that I, you tuned in with me, I was sitting in my chair uh, in the living room and uh, listening to music. And I showed you a little bit about foods, just a few choices. I'm sure you have, you know, you can look up what high protein foods are. I'm not medically sound on anything. I'm just sharing what, you know, people have given to me through this walk. And uh, it's been one heck of a walk, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm still trying to hold it together with the pain level down. And let me tell you, the time you take Tylenol, <laughs> they don't give you a lot of pain meds, you know, to, uh, to get you through. Uh, once you leave the hospital, um, I think I went home with 18 pain meds. No, I'm serious. Eight. I said 18. You know, not even a full 20 count. Okay, and so you don't you don't get refills. At least I certainly didn't. Okay, I rotated between the pills that they gave me, um, the narcotic pills, which was Altram, the lowest they could get, uh, because I don't like to have that high feeling. But when you're really in a lot of pain, you're glad for anything that you can get. Um, so I did um, take those, you know, and I rotated between Tylenol and ibuprofen, and I just kept rotating between the three of them constantly. I still am. Um, and again, I went to came today, and uh, they took out the drink. Yay! <clears throat> the pump is gone, y'all. <clears throat> Excuse me, <clears throat> be dignified. I no longer have the pump installed. They have released me from that thing. <clears throat> Thank you, God. <clears throat> I told you, even the little things, I consider silver linings when you're going through. Mm -hmm. Just take the drain off. Just get it, get, clip it. And you know what didn't hurt that bad taking it off? But guess what? I thought all the pain was just gonna go with it. Nah. Mm-mm. Hmm. But you know what? I'm okay. I'm talking to you. That's right, I'm okay. And I know your prayers is coming through to me. And I thank you so much for the prayers. You know, God bless you. Thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for standing with me. And we're standing with each other. Thank you. Can't even say it loud enough. Thank you very, very much. Oh, my God. I'm so grateful. I really am. Um, and I, and I, I think you know that, too. I say it too much, right? I, well, you're not going to keep hearing me say it over and over and over because I am. And um, I was gonna say that they took it, they took it off. And you know what the next thing she told me? Oh, huh? Therapy. 
I was like, well, no, 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 no. Not yet. Not yet. And I thought, this, this quick. Well, then another two weeks, you know. It's just, you don't want to wait too long. I'm like, but I just got cut. <laughs> and, and I'm not even done healing. But you can't wait until you heal all the way. You have to, you know, my, I can't raise my arm up and I don't have feeling in all of, in certain parts. And they're telling me that I may not regain feeling all of, at all. Um, you know, cause they cut through muscle and nerves and stuff like that. In my case, that doesn't mean it's gonna happen to you. Not everybody has an individual way that they're doing it, or that they go through, okay? You're following me and what I'm going through. Doesn't mean because you have mastectomy that you're going to do the same thing. I don't know what you're going to, what they're going to have you do, or like the drain that they took in. It could stay anywhere between one to three weeks, one to four weeks. I'm sorry, she said. Okay, so and that's what I thank God. Mine stayed in. Watch this. One week, thirteen days. Did you hear me count them babies down? I said one week. One week, 13 days. You know what? I didn't have the minutes in the second, but I got them day babies down with the days because I was thinking, get it out. Just get it out. But let me say, after it's in for a while, you really, your body, God makes your body to uh, accommodate. And after you have it in, it's like you sort of get used to being there. Even though it's uncomfortable, you, he makes you deal with it. See, in his word, he said, I'll put no more on you than you can bear, okay? So, thank God, I'm bearing it. Come on. So, I'm thanking him all the time. I'm thanking God. He's just, I, I, listen, my son called me, texted me, and he's, you know, it's like, is that still in there since the surgery? And he went, and, and a text went, jeesh. Wow, and I'm like, jeez, <laughs> it made me laugh. <laughs> that was his word for it, jeez. Like, <laughs> I can't even imagine. I'm like, oh, I said, I must, I must not be doing. Uh, it must not be too bad. I'm dealing with it. I'm coming through. Come on, every day, it, waking up with it, going to sleep with it. I'm getting through one day at a time. So there you go, huh? So look, see how I look at it? You have to. You got to do what you got to do. Thank God it gives you the strength to go through. And like he said, I'm going to put no more on you than you can bear. So I'm thankful for that. But anyway, um, I was upstairs and I, I'm downstairs in the lobby now. I, I was, uh, they, she took out the, the, the drain off of me. Just <laughs> and um, it came out easily. I mean... She said, now that's gonna shit feel a whole lot better. And I was like, no, pain's still here. It, is, it didn't stop. She was like, she said, don't scrutinize too much. Look at the doctor. Let me tell you about the doctors or how blessed you are. Let me tell you about the silver linings, okay? The people that work on you are silver linings. All right, they are. They didn't have to work on you. God didn't have to put them there, but he did. He put everybody in place. From 2016, um, the doctor that the surgeon that worked on me, she was in place, and she taught me certain things about removing um, thoughts of the surgery and imagining an airplane or a helicopter lifting up each individual thing that may you may be fearful of of the surgery and moving in a way or even in your life and see it, you know, flying away, taking each thing away from you. And practice that in your mind. Let yourself see it. Look at that. And the Bible said, as a man thinketh, so is he. Come on. I line everything up with the word of God. You better come on now. I was like, oh, God put this woman right here. She would check on me after the surgery. She came to my room. I was admitted back in 2016 as well, as I told you in a VIP room. Thank God, you know, not by accident. I'm like, whoa, you know, 
Uh, if you look at the other videos that I've done, I've explained that, you know, about how I happened to, God bless me to, to have a VIP room in 2016 and then turned around and had another one in 2019 right now. Uh, nobody but God. Come on now. And um, I'm just so very thankful for that. I certainly could not have afforded such a thing. But um, I want to say that those same things that she said, I know that when they're coming, when they line up with the Word of God, I'll be thinking, God, see there, she's right here for me. She visited me every day. She did. Surgeon, who got surgeon does that? She had just started back um, from England, and I'm not going to mention her name because I'm not sure if I'm allowed to. I didn't get her permission to, so I'm not. Um, so she checked on me every day, okay, when I was admitted to here to the hospital. And uh, I was so thankful for that. I'd never seen that in my life. It scared me, actually, because I'm thinking, what's wrong with this woman? Oh, she's coming to my room every day, checking on me. I mean, what, what's up? You know, when something, something's too good, you start thinking it's wrong. Well it, well, it was right, okay? Not only that, you know, she had a car come and pick me up. And you know, this the driver was dressed, hat, coat. No, I'm not playing. You hear me? I'm like, what? To take me home? Yeah, I wanted to go home for the 4th of July. And she arranged for a driver to come. A driver. Uh, not Uber. I said a professional driver. <laughs> you hear me? Yes. Dressed. Mm -hmm. To pick me up. To take me home. This is in 2016. I'm telling you this because I, I, you have to see the hand of God in my life. Okay? Um, And... Uh, so here I met Dr. Oh, I can't say names. I'm not going to say names. Because <laughs> I didn't ask him if I could use it. He didn't say I could. Um, so um, the doctor that did my radiologist, and I call him my godson right now because uh, he's around my son's age. And um, a wonderful young man. Um, I wish I could say it. Um, I'm gonna, well, you know what? Um, his name was Dr. Shaw. Let me just say that, okay? He said it was named after his father. And uh, so I just thank God for him, okay? Um, and I then, let me see who's next. Oh, the lady that, the doctor that um, was assigned to me this time. Um, and she did say I could say her name. <laughs> Dr. Stephanie Vellante, surgeon, and bless me so much. Uh, she gives me a hug when she sees me. Um, just the love, you, professional, a uh, top notch. Uh, she's very well known, you know, here for, um, you know, for what she does. She's a surgeon, okay? So, um, I just can't even say I'm not enough. God put her right in place for me. She said, I'm going to treat you like you're my own mother. Because uh, she knew my children were busy. They couldn't be here with me. And my family were busy. They couldn't be here with me. God and, and the angels are here with me all the time. But she was like, no, I want you to know that it's okay. I'm here. And I'm going to treat you just like my own mom. And she gave me a hug. And I gave her a hug. When I just left the office, I saw her, I saw Dr. Shaw in the, in the hallway. And he gave me a hug, you know. Yes. And I said, this is my spiritual godson. And including his children. He had a little boy. I think just now uh, another baby him and his wife has. Just recent. Is going to have. Hasn't had it yet. But um, just told me that he, they were having another baby. So um, I believe that will be two sons for him. And um, I think, I'm going to say it, it's Dr. Chirag S. Shaw. Um, he said he was named after his father, okay? Uh, middle name Severe. And that's his family tradition to be named after your father. Look, that's what I tell you about family, the importance. And, um, but uh, Dr. Stephanie Volante, um, just wonderful. Um, can't say enough. Also, the lady that 
even she told me right before I left the office she said you should be thinking uh, the lady also that discovered your you know the calcifications on your diagnostic um, you know film don't you see what I'm saying and I do thank her I don't know her name but I want you to know that when you have a team of people working together now back in 2016 I wrote a letter to the head of this hospital um, and I just thank God you know that he responded you know to me thanking me for the letter I said I want him to smell his roses while he could and that for all the people that wanted to write letters and never did to tell them that how they gave hope to the hopelessness and a lift up you know um, because when you're down you, you feel like you're out but you know it's just so good to just uh, have be in the midst of a hospital that cares about you and I'm not just talking about this hospital the, my own practice that I have, um, that I go to, I, I go to see a lung specialist, for those of you that don't know it, and um, it, pulmonary physicians, um, I see them, you know, and um, they have really blessed me, the doctor that I see, and, um, you know, if it weren't for him, you know, um, again, his interceding, uh, also to the nurse practitioner, uh, Diane, they know who they are. <laughs> um, just wonderful. Um, so, pulmonary physicians, you know, meaning, you know, when you have lung problems, those type of doctors works on your lungs and help you to recuperate and so forth. So I'm just so thankful for so many things, okay? Thankful for this drain being out. And again, tomorrow is my birthday, 20, 67 years old. Thank God that I made it, I'm here. I'm standing, I see it. You're still standing regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the cancer. Stand, stand strong. Know that you will come through it. God got you. Come on, everything. It's gonna be, it's already all right. I'm not even gonna say gonna be all right. Let's speak those things that are not, come on, as though they were. Speak them into existence. That's what we gonna do. So, thank you for being with me on Encouragement to Cancer. I'm gonna let you go. I want you to have a blessed day, okay? Thank you for tuning in with me. I, I'm sorry for holding you too long. I'm, I'm gonna apologize now, but I'm gonna cut it off right now. Love you, God bless you. I'll see you next time, right here with me. Follow me. Don't leave me. Thank you for your comments. Subscribe. Now, come on. Keep the comments coming. I need them. Okay. God bless you. Right here on Encouragement to Cancer. And remember, through everything, there is a silver lining. Okay. God bless you. Bye.